Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Eat, Move, Win and Musings of a Bullshit Queenager. Today we have a rather awesome guest and actually, I didn't mention this to you before, she's quite famous. So I've, like, I had talked, I've had this lady in my membership and when I published that she was coming out, I had loads of people going, oh, Laurie's amazing, Laurie's amazing. So today we have the lovely Laurie McPherson. She is known as the career wing woman. So thank you for joining me, Laurie. It's lovely to have you on. Oh, thank you, Emma. It's so lovely to be on with you. Fabulous. We are going to talk some good stuff about careers. We're going to, I'm not going to spoil it, but be a, be aware, listeners, that we have quite a few things in common. We like 90s dance music. We like dancing. We like drinking. We like partying. We like gabbing. We, we don't really, I hate this phrase, don't suffer fools gladly because like who actually does? Does anybody actually suffer a fool? Like, anyway, so there might be some stuff off tangent, but that's fine. Right, Laurie, give us a little quick intro. Who are you? What you're all about? All that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I am a career wing woman now. I worked before this. I've been doing this for about four years. Emma. I worked running my own gig for four years. It was slightly different in the beginning. I've always done a bit of employability and a bit of kind of management training stuff, but it has pivoted to career wing women during COVID because that's what people needed. Um, and that has just continued on yeah, for the last wee while. Before that, I worked in employability with long-term unemployed clients, a company called Vingius, which was awesome and kind of got me into what I'm doing now, albeit slightly um, different different level. And before that, I worked in retail for many, many years. I've sold knickers, I've sold frocks, I've sold diamonds. <laughs> I absolutely loved retail until I did me. Um, and I also worked in travel. I was a holiday rep and a team leader. I worked in land for six years and cruise for two. Uh, I left the UK when I was 20. I'd got my degree by then and had no idea what I wanted to do. So I decided to go and be a holiday rep for six months, much to my mum and dad's horror, and did it for six years because I loved it. Uh, where, so, um, where was your favourite place to rep? So absolutely 100% Mallorca. I'm going back there in a, a few weeks' time uh, for a month and I go there every summer. And one of those folk who goes to the same place because it's cracking. I've got loads of pals there and I have a lovely time. I um, love the food, I love the weather, I love where I stay. So it's great. Oh, that sounds amazing. I was going to say, I was like, are you actually going back to New York to be a holiday rep for a month? But you're actually just 100% going? no. no. <laughs> I'm 44, Emma. That is not a, a, a way to be shuffling around the airport in 40 degree heat wearing a, a jacket or a pair of high heels. Not I know, that always life. baffled me when you like, you're not, like, I've not been on a holiday like that for a while. Um, but you always look, and everybody always just looks so put together and you're just off a plane. <sighs> Scraggy hair, you're all bloated, you've got no makeup on, you look man, and you're just like, oh my god, how do you do it? How do you put tights on and heels? Like, oh yeah, heels were just a, a horrible nightmare. And I put tiny size two feet and I was often lose would lose my coat shoes in the Palma Airport car park and the bus drivers used to laugh and call me Cinderella. because eh, I couldn't keep them on my feet no matter how poopy. much I tried. It's horrible. It's, don't don't ever yeah, everyone's oh, my kid shoes, not in a lady's coat shoe. So it's better now. Asos petite is the way forward. But, um, Size two yeah. feet. That's really cute. Yeah. I've got really little hands, but nobody really know. No, you don't really need to wear gloves all the time. But anyway, <laughs> anyway yeah. right. Little people unite. Little West Coast of Scotland people unite. Right. So you're a career young woman. Interestingly enough, the career, the employability thing that you did many years before you were doing that, I think I applied for a role there and didn't get it. So I should have had you in my corner for that anyway anyway that's all by the way right I wanted to first of all talk about this thing that kind of happened during COVID at the tail end of COVID and it was called in the media the great resignation and scores upon scores of people women were leaving careers to set up their own businesses happy days right so I, I was I had already done all that before so I wasn't part of that I had the midlife crisis great resignation of oh shit I'm turning 40 I don't want to do this train trip any longer. Right. But so we had the great resignation, but now I'm seeing more and more stuff in the media and in LinkedIn about more and more of those women who left their business, left their careers and are going back into the workplace. Tell us a little bit about that. Do you, do you have any insight on that? Why is that happening? You know, what is going on? Like, is this a whole schizophrenic moment that we're having? So, first of all, we came out during COVID because the flex was horrific. What we're having uh, now, full disclosure, I'm child free, I don't really like Wayne's, and I cannot imagine anyone worse than being locked in a house with two Wayne's trying to school them and do your work. It's two different jobs, right? Because we pay people to look after their Wayne's, don't we? So 
the women were just like, I can't do this. It's just horrendous. I'm actually going to start all in business for the flexibility. What's happened is lots of them have kind of muddled along a wee bit and then they've realised actually, do you know what? Like the, the, they wanted to leave their their business their, their jobs either either their jobs to start a business or their jobs to go to another business for purpose and that's what loads of my women were coming to me I can't see myself doing insurance finance accounts banking types jobs for the next hundred years I want to get something I want to help people I want some more purpose after COVID I've re I've reevaluated my life some folk had a lot of time off some folk didn't you know neither were particularly good at points. Um, and folk just thought, do you know what, I need to throw my life up in the air and, and do something different. So lots of folk left. And yeah, you're right, lots of them are currently going back. Um, I published a, a, an article to my list last week, I think it was in Stylist, about people going back, it's calling them the boomerangs because they're going back. Lots of them left, but reg the regret is that they missed their colleagues, they missed the team. Lots of folk don't like working on their own. And I'm a huge advocate of flexible working, but it has to work for you. And lots of people who started businesses, maybe managed to chug along a bit or even do fairly well. The cost of living has hit them really hard. Also, lots of people, um, full disclosure, my own business has been here. You know, my sales are down this year and last year, Emma. Luckily, I had a really good year last year. I, I can just about afford to take the hit. But if you haven't been making much money before and you're now making less and your costs have gone up, it's easy to understand why people are going back. Mm -hmm. The narrative around self-employment has become everyone must be self-employed. What a wonderful thing. Sack the boss. Look at me. It's Tuesday afternoon and I'm sitting getting drunk on strawberry daiquiris, you know. And actually, the reality is we know as building a business is a full-on slog, 70% uh, of your time will be spent marketing yourself. I've got loads of women come to me who are like a coach. They've done their coach training, their ICF qualified, lovely. But they don't have any business or clients who don't know how to market themselves. So they've gone, oh, but I'm a coach, yep, you're a coach, you don't have any clients. So they have to go back to the workplace. So running a business is really, really hard. And the narrative is loud about how wonderful it is. In reality, it's super tough. You're having to market the noise, the algorithms, blah. And some folk are not, it's not for everyone. Some folk are not able to make a living from it right now. So they're going back to employment. And that is just the way it is. That I've talked about it and some people have talked about it, but it's it's quite quiet because people feel shame and you know, failure, a sense of all of that, totally being there myself literally two weeks ago about my business being, as I say, not 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 as as not turning over as much as I did last year. As I say, it's fine. I, I can work around it and things are coming, but you've got to be realistic. So lots of folk have gone, actually right now I need a steady job. And lots of folk have maybe gone back to a job two days a week or three days a week. It's not People have also realised that they don't necessarily need to work in a place five days a week, nine to five, bums on seats until they die. There are other ways of working and mm. other ways of living around yeah. your work. It is mental, isn't it? And I see this quite a lot. Um, people said, oh, I'll, I would love to help people. I'd love to be a coach. And that's probably why it was certainly in my kind of space. That's why most people get into it. And it's when you get that big slap in the face of, well, actually, you need to be a social media expert and you need to be a marketing expert and you need to be a salesperson. And you also need to be a coach and you also need to customer experience and customer service and all the process mappings and a project manager to get it all right. And it is hard, like there's no getting away from the fact that it is tough. And this year has been tough and a lot of business owners have had to pivot and do things differently. Like my how my business is set up this year is 90 degrees from where it was last year like this time last year I had one product now I've got four um yeah. I had one way of helping people and I've got all these four or five different ways and more in the pipeline so you're absolutely bang on as like it is sold the coaching life the service industry business owner life is sold on this whole I can just go and work in you know I'll go and work over I can take my laptop lifestyle and I can go and sit in my caravan yeah. for months and end. And, you know, it's the reality is, yeah, right. It is hard. It's it really is hard. hard. You can, you know, I, I went down to mom and dad's and Friday, but the reality is I had to ram all my other work into four days to get it done. Yeah. You know, and, and you're checking your phone in the lobby and we all know this, you know, so there's the glamorization stops people from being honest and saying, this isn't for me. I'm going back to a job. Yeah. And it really and annoys I, me because it's not for everything. I know. And it is, there is a kind of, I don't, a, a sense of shame for people going it's not for me and I know quite a few people that have gone 
into the workplace and but they're able to use the skills that they have learned in that period of being self-employed because you do learn a shit ton very very quickly in order to stay afloat yep. um, and going back into the workplace so that's I think it's I think it's hugely hugely interesting but we need to stop that kind of shamefulness about it I think it should actually be applauded because both 100%. Both being like, employed has got its own shit bits, but it's like I loved being employed. Like my company was amazing. The people I worked with amazing. They were so flexible with me. Uh, I got to go on bloody first class trips to India. You know, like there are huge, huge positives. Hundred percent. There is obviously still a lot of people out there that are considering, you know, setting up for themselves because long. I think there's a we have to be pragmatic where we are just now in the economy isn't always going to be this way you know it's it's tough just now it's probably going to be what is it they reckon 2025 before things settle down reality is though is it going to take that long so there is still a number of people that are going actually I want to stay in the workplace just now but I want to have a side hustle do you see that a lot coming through yeah 100 percent. and I think that's really really sensible especially if it's a job that you can start to drop a day you know, and build up a client base. That's the ideal way to do it. You know, I got made redundant, Emma, so I, I had to come out anyway. And by what I had done, by the time I was out, I had gained my first piece of work. I had created my website. I would got my business cards and I'd been networking at Lake Amolfo for six months. <laughs> so people knew who I was. So I wasn't going from a totally cold start. So I remember going in and I'm meeting and this lovely girl said, I, I mean, I'm still working and I finish on like Friday. I don't want to turn on my website in case I get inundated of inquiries. And I was just like, so that's not a thing. Like genuinely, <laughs> your web, like, that is not a thing. Like you're going to have to do six months to a year of solid graph before you get a client. And she was yeah. like, I'm sorry, what? So that's the reality, you know, unless you do some everybody needs like create you know a print business cards oh brilliant I need business cards or oh, I need flyers you know those sorts of jobs service-based businesses like ours people have to know like and trust you before they'll give you their money rightly I'm the same you know I, I only give my money to people that I like what they do and I've, I sniff about in people's worlds for ages before I part of my cash because I need to know that they can work for me and with me so I get it but if you can drop a day, if you can make it a bit more risk free, if you can get some money behind you just now, if you can't, if you are getting redundant, made redundant and taking some cash, happy days, you will not get a client usually instantly. It takes time to build. And this is something else that's not talked about. I posted daily when I pivoted from a bit of management training during COVID to career um, mentoring. I posted daily on LinkedIn for four months without a bite. Four months every day. Oh, that makes me feel so much happier because I see you on LinkedIn and you are this like goddess on LinkedIn and I post three times a week and crickets, crickets. Um, So yeah, that makes me feel a bit better. That's good. Oh, four four months of so, and every day I would go up and think I'm going to do my LinkedIn post today and they were probably shite, but also it's just, and then four months in, a wee lady came and said, oh, I need your help. I need you to write me a CV. And, and then she recommended a pal. And then, and then it took a wee while because she was hospitality. But then she got a job as soon as hospitality opened and she was buzzing. And she wrote me a testimonial, told a pal and so on. And it spiralled. And, and I got my, my name out there by relentless networking and showing up. So if you if you and I'm not saying you have to do what I've done at all because some folk are introverts and they're just like running hiding under the desk right now going oh my god I'm not doing that but you have to have a method to get people to you and I'm sorry not sorry it's not your website no I know, you know I've, another um, thing I've, uh, I remember when I first started and I, I was I'd left employment and I went into being a face to face PT because that was the route into what I wanted to do while I was doing my nutrition stuff so I remember I was like, right, I'm going to go online. I was like, right, I'm, I'm going to start a web. I'll start a website, right? And I start. I did a Wix website, and it was the most yeah, the biggest ball ache thing that I have ever done in my entire life. I still have nightmares thinking about formatting and <laughs> fonts. And um, it's like, yeah, I've got a website. Put it on Facebook. I've got a website. No, like nothing. No one knows you. No one's interested. Who's going to look at your website? And don't know who you are. You know what exactly. I mean? it's like, so, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, and it was like social media is where it's at, and that's how pretty much I. Like we've we've all ran our businesses, I think, is all through social media. And also, you touched on business cards there. Like, I had flyers. I've still got a box of a thousand flyers for a personal training business that does not exist. Um, I I changed brand and I had these old cards, my old brand because I I I was I was a brand and I decided to drop it and be myself after a couple of years. I still got you know chucked them fairly recycled them fairly recently, but 
yeah, the, all the things you think you don't, you need, you probably don't need, and all the things you know, it is probably, it's probably been the wrong way. Into my career, women, Emma, what's your low hanging fruit? Like, don't go. St- I must go and do another five years of study. Usually, no. Yeah. Usually, what is easy that that means that you then have what the next person needs. But to do that, you need to know what they need. You need to have done that bit of research first. Do not start. I see loads of folks saying, "I'm going to do a course. What course should I do?" And they don't know where it's to lead them. Yeah, what's well, totally thing. back to front? And I'll say, "Then you're, you're back to front. Why spend all that time and money? We don't know where the end goal is. Absolutely. What you actually usually need is experience." Uh huh. Right, so that kind of gets us back into the career land, right? So the people that are not too fussed about a side hustle, they actually just are maybe feeling a bit stagnated where they are in their own careers. And I think like we're both in our 40s. That's quite a common time for folk to kind of hit that. Is this it? You know, who do I want to be when I grow up? Like, that's a really common phrase. And I hear I don't even know who I want to be, what I want to be. Um. So people that are maybe sitting going, oh, I'm a bit stagnated in my career, I'm not utilising my skills, I'm bored, whatever it is. Where did they start? Like, to me, it looks really overwhelming being in the workplace these days. Um, where does somebody like that start? So first of all, rule some stuff out. And this sounds really negative, but genuinely rule out the stuff you don't want to do. I had a great session with someone this morning and we did this very exercise of, she keeps picking stuff she's good at, Emma, but she hates it. And one of her traits, and I did some work with her, um, I used, I know you've had her as a guest, she's awesome, I used Kat Patterson, who's got these U-prints, not blueprints, cards, um, which you, you 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 pull some cards, you get, you get it's not, it's not like witchy, but it's not, it's, you get a read of people's personality, and we got her down to a T, so it's like, stop picking, stop people pleasing with your jobs, and we ended up the session by, she said, I'm closing the door on that old thing that I hate, but I can do, close the door, we're not doing that anymore, so close the door on things you don't actually like, You'll feel a massive sense of relief, but then you end up in what I call in the weeds. You're no going back. You don't know what forward is. And it's really scary, especially when you try to talk about it to people who don't get it. And they're like, yeah, but you're really good at X. Yeah, but I don't want to do that anymore. Oh, as if like you've got a choice. Yes, you absolutely do have a choice. So first things first is rule some stuff out. What do you not want? Two is, you know, what, what might you want? Do some research, do some exploratory stuff, look at some keywords, what, what are your skills? Say for total sake, it's stakeholder management, stick that into Indeed. You'll get loads of random stuff that you can do, but you're trying to also see what could you do, what patterns come up, what recruiters, what employers keep coming up that look for those sorts of things. Narrow it down, get a bit of a wish list, look at the salaries, do the practical bit last. Um, and I think that's the other bit as well. If you cannot take a hit in your salary right now, that's okay. There's no, you know, but also know that that's a, there are choices. You could, should you so desire, move house. You could buy a smaller car. You could, if you don't want to, that's absolutely fine. And especially for women, there's no shame in saying I want a good salary. There's no shame in saying I don't want to care for people. I don't, I, you know, I'm not doing that as a job in an industry. That's okay. We're taught from birth that it's not. It absolutely is. All my women will say, money's not really important. And I will say, well, I'm going to stop you right there. It absolutely is. Have you ever yeah. been to Morrison's and they said, listen, I would have charged you 57 95 for that, but you're obviously a really good person doing great stuff in your work. So just on your trot. That's not a thing. Like, so let's stop pretending all this absolute crap right now. Having money doesn't make you a bad person. How would it be if I said to you, you could actually donate more time and money to the charities of your choice if you had a great job that you loved? I know. I love awesome. the money mindset stuff like that. Oh, just just but, honestly, I, I hear it so often. I'm like, oh, the money doesn't really matter. And I'm like, no, no genuinely, I, I could see the big house in the background. And I'm like, that. no, that costs money to maintain, you know? So work out what you need to earn. And, and is there any flex in that? If there isn't, there isn't. Is it something? Can your partner take the hit for a while? Can you move in with somebody? Can you move? And I'm not saying these are possible for everyone. All I'm saying is don't rule stuff out. If you want to move mountains, you might have to do some difficult stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, also know that a career transition is tricky because an employer has to see how you can help them no I get all the time but I want to apply for that's okay I want to be Jude Law's next nanny but it's highly unlikely because I'm a wee fat crab at middle aged woman so what is actually realistic and, and then look at the steps you need to take so where do you want to end up I'd like to work in the charity sector right have you got any experience no go and get some and I say that as kindly as possible whether it's raising funds for your way in school whether it's sitting on the board whether it's you know becoming a volunteer 
go and get some experience. If that's what they're asking for, they're not just going to hire you because they're, you're nice unless you can get an in. So yeah. who do you know? So once you know what you want to do, you've noodled through it. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Here's what I'm leaning towards. I've done some research. I've looked into these sorts of jobs. They're in my wheelhouse in terms of salary. C- can you get speak to someone who already does it? Your, your key here is LinkedIn always or, or finding another contact. Who do you know who already does it? Now, you can just go in cold and ask a total random or for a conversation. It's their time. You can build relationships on there and then say, what you do looks really cool. Would love to chat more about it. It's something I'm really interested in. Fancy a coffee. I Maybe like virtually it. more online. And you're having a, the Squiggly Careers, which is an amazing um, movement. Uh, they've got two books, You Coach You and the Squiggly Career. Um, and they've got an amazing podcast. It's called Amazing If. It would be Amazing If. Uh, and the Squiggly Careers. They talk about curious conversations. Have a curious conversation with someone in the space. But ask them. What does your days look like? How did you get in? What do you wish you'd done differently? Would you have taken the qualification again? Um, what's your what's progression looking like for you? You know, where could I end up? What, what is the things that might trip me up? And be really, really clear on what you want out of these conversations as well. And once you know where you want to go, start building a community of folk who are already there around you. Again, use LinkedIn for this. Start attending those sorts of events. You'll feel like a total imposter because you're not there yet. But you're not going to get there until you start mixing with these people, hearing what they're talking about and knowing how you can help them to, to do that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it is a process and it's not something you do overnight. Um, and other people's opinions can really influence, especially if you are seen to have a good job, a sensible job. If you're an accountant, a lawyer or whatever, and you're suddenly going, I'm just going to burn this down. And your pal's going, what? <laughs> you know, you've you've got this. You're the sensible one. Like, if you do something crazy, then what is that? And you really need to be prepared, like a bell jar, and your glass jar over your head, and your stock response until you're ready to discuss further. Especially with you know folk who don't get it, like your mummy and daddy are not going to understand why you walked away from that eighty grand a year job. Happy, Jink, I was happy doing the pit. Peace, peace. You know, especially west of Scotland. That's that's the chat. You get to choose. Say. Yeah, I totally get it. However, you know, we work a little bit differently. I'm, I'm, I'm exploring my options right now. I'm not going to like it. That's okay. Yeah. But you have to protect yourself. And I, I always say this to people before you go, go up and out. I'm going to leave my sensible career, which I earn loads of money from. Be prepared. Get your, get your shield and armour ready because people won't get it. So you have to be prepared because you're going through this process. You don't have to go through it on your own, but essentially it's your yeah. It's your stuff. It's you that gets to decide. You know, when you might think, oh, go, you know, I can, I can afford to take a 60 grand hit. I'm going to retrain as a yoga teacher. Brilliant. Go do. If you can, how could you bring some of that into your life? I always say to people, do you need to do it full time? Mm. Could you learn it on the side and do it on a Tuesday night and a Saturday morning? Oh, that, would, would that fill enough of your cup? And only you know that. Could you then drop a day and do it on Friday all day? Could you, you know, what, what might that look like? And these are all things to explore. It's all possibilities. Yeah. One of the one of the questions I had, and it's just you'd said something, and I was like, oh, she's got her tough love Tessa head on. <laughs> <laughs> and I I would anticipate I've never worked with you. I know quite a few people that have worked with you, but um I would anticipate that at times you do have to get quite, you know, ballsy with people. And I'm kind of thinking yeah. along the lines of the people that have got a vocation. So I'm thinking, like you mentioned, accountants, oh, yeah. people that have gone and qualified in something that they need the qualification and to do the job, teachers, accountants, medicine, all that kind of stuff. How do you deal with those people that are just so like, oh, I'm a teacher and that's what I'm born to do. But actually, when they dig a little bit deeper, they realise that it's sucking the life out of them or they just don't like it anymore. But that's all they believe that they can do. Like, how do you help people start thinking about the, like, I know you said, well, I don't want to do that anymore, but how do you start teaching people about, you know, your skills are transferable. If you can do this part of your accountancy, whatever, you can do this part here. It's a really tricky question. I was having this conversation with someone the other day. Transferable skills is a bit of a red herring. Oh, oh, let's get the popcorn out, folks. This is going to be a good one. Oh, I'm really sorry. It is. Um, employers don't care that your skills are transferable. They can't see it unless you show them in the way that appeals to them, right? So teachers are a really common one for me, Emma. I've helped a few. Usually they usually they can't move because they can't take a hit in the money. But they're not getting enough money, which is why they're striking. 
Mm, it's a name a dilemma. Um, I always struggle with that one, and they won't pay because they won't spend the money. But they, they you know, for, for my services, but but they, yeah, they desperately want out, and it's horrendous, and it's really awful. And I just think, right, okay, here's the here's the deal. You thought you were going to be a teacher till you died. You're no, because you hate it with a passion, and it's sucking the life out. You've done it for twenty years, right? Yes, you have hundreds of transferable skills, but if you present yourself as a classroom teacher on a CV, nobody else is going to hire you because they're going to go teacher bin. So there's a couple of things you can do. One is civil service because they don't care where you got the competencies as long as you can show you've got them. So that's an option for loads. The other thing is, what is your low-hanging fruit, right? It's education. doesn't need to be a school. could be a university, college. That's an easier transition because you can get out and back in. And then the other thing is things companies who work with education providers so like folk that create resources for teachers or comms for you know for talking sake and, and these are just a couple of the, the, the things and I'm going to have like pure pitchforks every time I meet a teacher now um for, for saying that but you know, genuinely you know, you do an amazing, you do an amazing job. It's really important, but they tend to then present themselves as if I'm a teacher. And, and it's, I, I have said to someone, this is Dr. Drake Ramore and Days of Our Life stuff. Do you remember Joey Triviani sitting there, not getting a job and saying to Ross, that'll be fine. I was Dr. Drake Ramore on Days of Our Life. You know that, right? And I'm going, no, I know that you owe $1,200 on your credit card bill because it's sitting there. Get a job um, and stop resting on your past. Someone the other day told me, but I worked for Deloitte, you know, Okay, 500 years ago, we need to look at what employers want now. So position yourself in a way that not just your teaching stuff, you do loads of other stuff. There's mental health, there's safeguarding. Children's charities are a good shout, for example, if they need teachers, facilitation, education, learning. That doesn't need to be teaching. It can be, say, apprenticeship providers. All of these things are your low-hanging fruit to get you out. What teachers and other people who are stuck might need to realise is you might need one job to get you out another job to be the real the, the real place you want to go yeah. now if if, I, if you've worked in an industry for 20 years and i'm suddenly telling you you need to take two jobs the next year i get that you want to lie in a dark room with a plastic bag over your head at that point but the reality is you have to get yourself out so that people don't see you as just a whatever you're not but it's a really it's a really tricky positioning and the, the easiest way I've seen it done is the folk who've gone into other education roles, like in university, student support or, you know, teaching students or in, in further higher education, accessibility, supporting students, all of these kind of things that, that you can do. Now, I know what you're thinking. I need to take a, a financial hit. You probably will. So only you can decide if that is doable and possible. You know, I, what's really interesting there is you started, we started off this conversation talking about purpose like people wanting to be able to make a difference setting up their own businesses that's a purpose now we're talking about people where their career is their identity you know it's like yeah. I'm, a, I'm a teacher I'm an accountant and that forms a that's it. part of who yeah. they are in the, in, in the world and identity and purpose are two of the biggest drivers of change 100%. like so that's, I think that's just, that's quite interesting how that's going to come full circle there right talk to me a little bit about LinkedIn um we, we touched on it before that you're a bit of a LinkedIn ninja um, if if LinkedIn fame was a real thing, you'd probably be in it, but I, that would be a terrible <laughs> thing to happen because, quite frankly, it's quite soul destroying. But anyway, everybody, right? So, what should people do on LinkedIn? Should anybody be on LinkedIn if you're not even looking for a career change? If you're looking to set up your own business, tell us more. Everybody should be on LinkedIn. Get the popcorn. So. The reason you should be on LinkedIn is it's an insurance policy, Emma. So you're in a job, you're happy as Larry, absolutely no notion of moving. You're going to say to me, Ugh, why should I bother? LinkedIn is another thing to do. Great. Your boss, who is lovely, could leave tomorrow. You could get brought over. Funding could change. Your job could go. You could be made redundant. And it's not just negative things. You might wake up one morning and think, oh, do you know what? I watched a fantastic program on the telly last night about blah. I would really like to do that job. I'm going to investigate what that involves. That is your gateway to uh, hundreds and thousands and actually billions of people who do the thing you want to do, who can help and support you, who can become a community, who can become your pals, your business buddies, whatever, if you use it. So a classic example the other day, Emma. Last did a repost, by the way, repost get no traction, total waste of time, 10 months ago. Then did a repost seven months ago. Then the other day, hello, I have been made it under, I need a new job. You know, totally get it. Really sad, really panicked stations. 
who are you talking to? You have no connections. You have made no attempt to, to build a community and, and brand on LinkedIn. So who are you actually putting that post out to? Your hundred connections who you worked with in the past, probably in this job, who already know you're redundant because guess what? They're redundant too. It's it's not it's not good enough to get you a job from the platform. You can absolutely apply for hundreds and millions of jobs right now, but the market is really, really tough. So would you rather not have somebody say, oh, I worked with her two jobs ago. She was absolutely fantastic. She's really good at X, get her in for an interview or send your CV into the ether with 9 million others. Yeah. We have to be realistic. And LinkedIn is the place where we can create a wee bit of, you don't have to use it every day. Like It's different for business owners, right? If you're a business owner, sorry, you need to shout above the noise. I'm on it every single day. That's a choice. It's great. Three times a week, whatever you can do. If you are in an employment, just get on once a week. If, if that is all you can commit to, post, but answer comments, add connections who you want to see and be seen by. Now, I know you don't want to be seen by anybody because that means putting your head above the parapet. It's terrifying. But genuinely, who would you want to see your profile? Who do you want to talk to? The search bar is your best friend. You can search for anything you like and filter it and find who you want to talk to. If you want to speak to female founders, go for your life. Stick it in the search bar. If you want to talk to people that work in Tesco Bank, for your life you can put that in the search bar they're all there you get to choose who you find so if you want to tell me linkedin's dead gray and boring you're following the wrong people genuinely i follow great people it's a great laugh uh, my my folk do all sorts of interesting stuff it's your insurance policy it's where you'll get clients it's where you'll find business friends it's where you'll find the same person as you doing your job in another place what a great asset when you're thinking, oh, I doesn't really know what to do about that problem. And there, lo and behold, your pal across it, the same type of organisation has already done it and has posted about it this very morning. You've already built a relationship in the comments. You can absolutely ping in a message going, I don't, oh, I don't know what to do about that. What did you do? How did it work? Can I have a chat? So yes or no, with no expectation of anybody, but it's, a, it's your way to build your brand. Now, I know building your brand is deeply awful, icky, and, and I know you're thinking... I'm just an accountant. I'm never not going to be an accountant. I've no desire to build a brand. It's all right for you, Laurie. You're dead confident and you always wear your lip of print, your red lipstick. It's not about that. I don't get, you don't get any money off your messages by, again, holding up a card that says, sorry, I'm not confident. <laughs> it's not a thing. Tough love test is out. Tough love test is out. So you, you you just have to, you know what, you don't have to do what, you, do what you want. If you want to sit there and then wait till you get me redundant or wait till you decide to change and then think, oh, I'll go from a really cold start here, but it's so much easier. Every single day I introduce folk to other folk on LinkedIn. It's very, you know, I'm constantly making notes, ah, you'd want to speak to her. Why don't you speak to them? And and then the reciprocity is great because people go, oh, such and such. Just yesterday, someone mentioned me saying such and such talks to me about you. Now, this is someone I've never worked with. He knows my old boss, but he sees me on LinkedIn. We chat on the comments and he recommends me somebody. Why don't you go to Laurie? That's how it works. If nobody knows you exist, they can't ever recommend you. You're right. And it is like that whole personal branding thing. Like how, being a, It's not about you know, being this uber fancy dancy and your poshest outfit and your pristine makeup every single day. And that's like, yeah, we all want to put ourselves out to the world like that. But in real life, that's not how we do it. But it is like when when that moment comes and you do decide or somebody decides for you that you've already got that tool there ready and waiting for people to go, ah, right, yeah, know who that is or know some yeah. those connections. It's all good. And, you know, it's not once like, up until probably about tail end of last year, I didn't really bother with LinkedIn. It was something that I had on when I worked at three. Um, and then I was like going through it and I was right. I was like, yeah, this is really dull and boring because it's all like system developers and network developers and mass engineers from three. And I'm like, yeah, this is, I don't, I don't need to be near these people anymore. Um, so yeah, it's, it doesn't have to be great and boring. No, it depends who you follow. Loads and loads of people um, come up with sort of like, oh, it's really boring, I can't do it. I'm, I'm a creative. And I'm like, yeah, you also need to create some money. Yes, that's very person. true. So you might, it might, you know, and it might not always be your customer. So I've got a, one of my pals is an interior designer. So the search bar does not let you filter women with plenty of money who want to do up their hooses in Edinburgh, right? That's not a search function. What is a search function is property developers, mortgage brokers, builders, plumbers, 
people who could refer to and from you. So she will build up supplier connections. In the meantime, as she does that, people will add her in any way mm-hmm. because they can see her out there posting in the world. So it doesn't matter if you can't search for women who like a jazzy earring. You know, that's not a search. You can look for suppliers, other jewellery makers, etc. People who might have communities of these folks, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, so that you can be part of this world and have some chat. So the jewelry designer was on yesterday chatting about her, getting a new tattoo. You do not have to be boring. You can put up great, I'm delighted to announce post that nobody else cares about if you so desire, or you can put up, you know, I was at Elton John Saturday night, it was absolutely smashing. I've waited five years for it. What a lovely time I did have. Who's the biggest person I've ever seen? Hundreds of engagement on that because I asked a question. Mm. Yeah. People love to get. How married. good was Elton John though? Oh. oh, what a joy! Did you go on Saturday or Sunday? No, I went to Aberdeen. I was up in the. Oh, Tuesday. yeah, of course you were the day before me. Yes, oh my goodness, amazing! So you don't you know I've got Beyonce gifts. I was at Murrayfield a few weeks ago. I, I put pictures. I don't have a dog, unfortunately. By the way, dogs, pets, Hunter's attraction. I just put my pals Jack Russell up when I was trying to write a course, and his nose was between me and my laptop. More traction than you'll ever get on a sales post. Again, sorry, not sorry. Um. People love to know the human side and they either they you either attract or repel. People are nosy. Yeah. You know, what, what does this person do? Um, what do you do at the weekend? If I see somebody that's walking up a hill, I think smashing, no for me. You know, it doesn't mean I don't want to work with or for them. I just it's no my jam. So yeah. I think right, great, you know, but I, I love finding out about people and humans and I didn't know, you know, it's like oh, I didn't know you did that, I didn't know you were there. Emma posted about going to Street Rave and Air, which I was at, I didn't know she was there. We're like, all right, so you know, now we're chatting about going. <gasps> did you see pre coming out? We've got the new date yeah. for next year. <laughs> it's in the day already for next year. My pal's already messaging me like, eh, are we getting pre-sale early? For to... Yeah, all of the things. You know, so you either go, I have loads of, I put it on my email newsletter a few weeks ago and the amount of comments I got saying, oh, I love your email because you you talk human, you know, mm-hmm. you can talk about what it's really like um, to do your job. It's not easy. I often talk about how not easy it is and night suit and, you know, life because people go, oh, yeah, I totally, I totally like that or they don't and both are fine. Yeah. People like to talk to people and they like to people. People like people. You're right. You are right. Right. We're over time, probably. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Actually, I knew I knew it. I had Laura McGuinness on from the Glasgow Girls Club last week and I was like, I should have booked this for like three hours later. <laughs> no, right. If anybody uh, wants to find you, Laurie, where can they find you? Do you have any freebies that you can offer them or anything like that? Give us a give us some sell to sell, sell, sell. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm Laurie McPherson on LinkedIn and a Facebook, Laurie McPherson Career Wing Women, Insta, Laurie McPherson. I do have freebies, I've got a CV tips and template if you're sitting staring at the blank screen thinking I'll just add another paragraph to my 20 year old CV. Don't do it, nobody wants to see that anymore. Um, and I also have also got a goal prompt freebie, which is my invitation to you to sit down at the end of every month and write down your evidence of what you've learned this month, also what you're doing next month. Have you booked a coffee with? someone you want to have a curious chat with, you booked a networking event, so that when you get to the point where you want to write an application, you don't think, I have absolutely no idea what I've been doing for the last 15 years, I can't even remember, leave me alone, this is horrible. So uh, you can actually do a quick sit down every month and document it with a glass of wine or a cup of tea, and uh, that's free on my website, and my website is just lauriemcpherson.com. Okay, going to send me some links, if you can send yes. me the links to them, I'll put them in the show notes, and you it's easier for people to get the things and then come into your world and you make sense and into the lorry verse oh that's a cool phrase the lo- so it's a, it's a lizzie goddard elizabeth buckley goddard who's a, a, a who's membership i mean actually her, her silver moon sales she talks about whirling people around the lizzie verse so i'm whirling them around the lorry verse emma verse no i'm emma quite verse. scared of that yeah. so, that sounds like Thanos. <laughs> that sounds quite evil i'm into my world <laughs> anyway right it was lovely to have you on thank you so much thank you so much if you do want to know more about laurie just go and find all those things and you can get our freebies in the show notes uh thanks for listening and i'll speak to you again in the next episode